I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is February 27th, 2020. And in this video, I'll be printing out the all-in-one 3D printer test from by uh, Majda 107 on my Prusa Mini. Okay, I've already printed this out, but I'm going to go over some stuff. And I'll go through some more details in it, but I'll just do a real quick view here. This is printed out. And I'll go do some more flybys to show as much detail as I can in the video. And I think it did a real good job. Um, now, um, let's see. Let's go over the details right now. Go over the details really quick so we can move on. So the time to print this out took me six hours and eight minutes to print out. It took 0 0.039 cents of electricity, 3.9 cents of electricity. And it weighs 0 0.048 kilograms. That $20 per kilogram comes up to 96 cents. You add that all together, it cost $1 to print out this test on a Prusa Mini, which probably posts on my other... I did another video on my uh, Prusa i3 Mark III a while ago, and probably the cost was the same. I have to go look at it. Um, but just to show you where it is, if you go out here on Thingiverse, this happens to be Thing 2656594, and I'll put a link in the show notes. But you can go down here, get the files, and bring them in there. And I'll show you what I did, how I set it up, just so you can see. Let me bring in my slicer here. Uh, so I got it right here. What I did is I went down to 0.15 millimeter quality for my uh, Prusa Mini, and I did 15% infill, and that's what I did. Now, one thing uh, you'll see as I do the flybys, or, or you can just see here as I slice it, in the in the uh, in here, let me show you real quick. Well, let me go back. Here, you'll, you'll notice there's no text here. If I go back to the, before the slice, there's actually some text in here, but it doesn't show up. And I kind of didn't think about that because for me, one of the most important things is the hangover. Uh, I really like the hangover and see how well they can do. For me, I kind of like not super fancy prints. I like more practical prints. And so for me, the fact that the text didn't show up, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm really caring about the uh, bridging. I'm really caring about the, uh, about the overhang and what it does. Uh, and so when I do an export on this, I'll do it again. Oh, not that. Do a... Go back to the slice. If you slice it with the default, the, that text does not show up. Now, what I like to do on my channel, where I'm, I'm trying to go overall, is I believe what I want is I want the printers and the slicers to get smarter and more convenient as time goes on. So much, so much so that in the future, maybe you just say, "Oh, that's a cool print," and I send it to my printer, and it figures out what to do, and it slices it. I don't have to pre-slice it. That's my ultimate goal. Is like the microwave oven. So I like to keep things simple, and so I try not to tweak the settings very much. Uh, but with this, if you want to get that text, you got to tweak the settings. So I'll show you this, and in fact, I might do another video because I'm curious on, on how this works. I've never done it. If you go into print settings on here, and you have to go to expert, and then down here you'll choose detect thin walls. That's not a normal, typical setting. You choose that, now I go back and I re-slice it and that text will show up. And I didn't know that yesterday when I was preparing this. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't realize that. So now that text should show up. So I think I might do another video and I think maybe I'll do a combination. I'm not sure. I want to go do this, this thin wall and I might even do one where I do a smaller nozzle. I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, something I learned. But typically, I don't want to do special settings. I really just want to push the button and make it work. Um, so there is all that. So now with that, let me go do some flybys, get as much detail as I can and kind of just show you as best I can back and forth on what's going on with the print. Okay, so for me, I like to focus on the on the overhang. That's one of my favorite things. And the nice thing, if you're not familiar with this print, on the overhang, it gives you the angle. So there's a 60 degree angle, 75, and this one goes all the way to 80. And if you look at those, they are done really well. My rule of thumb is I try, when I'm designing something, I try not to exceed 45 degree angle going out. But you can see if you look underneath these, they're doing a really good job. Even I'm impressed up until the 80 because it's amazing that you can do that to begin with. Maybe it just doesn't fall apart. But you can see it's doing really good. Even past 60 and 75 is not bad. Once you get 80, you're starting to get a lot of goop in there. But it's still it survives, so it's amazing. So that's one of the things I really focus on because it's something I'm, I'm concerned about when I do design. The other thing is bridging. You can see these bridges and there's space underneath there and they do a really good job. So for me, those are the things I'm mostly concerned of. Um, but for everyone else involved, there might be other things that you're considered. 
Um, there's other things that might change when I do the thin wall detection. And so, or if you want to sit here and measure things, I don't really care. I mean, I've printed out enough stuff that when I measure it, it does a really good job. But if you were concerned with those things, you could look at them. Um, you can see, I do have some wisps. So you can see these wisps that came off here, uh, back and forth. And so for me, that's not a great thing. But wisps can be taken, you can take care of those pretty easily. One way is to use a heat gun um, to take care of those. But for me, you know, it's a pretty good job. So I'll just, some of you guys are going to have different concerns and different things you want to see. So I'm just going to rotate here and see, try to focus on different areas. And everyone can focus on what they want to focus on. And if there's something you can't see, maybe just put a, a note in here or post a message, and maybe I can take some better pictures and post them somewhere. If there's something that you're more so more concerned of that I can't really show that I don't that I don't show in this video, and you can see some of the text doesn't show up too well because you know I'm using a 0.4 millimeter and text that small can be difficult to do. Lazy Susan, right? So I can do this more officially. But we work with what we got. Need to print out a Lazy Susan. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, lastly, I want to do a little news follow up on my. I did recently on my other video, I updated my firmware to 4.0.3 on the Prusa Mini. And one of the big deals that I was concerned about that they hope that they fixed is the thing that they fixed. And that was the M600 where you can swap filament out. So um, my swap filament, what I've done is my daughter ordered a bunch of, she ordered, she ordered a bunch of rainbow octopuses. So these involve, let's see, one, two, three, four, because they're two pieces, four swap outs during printing. And so I ended up with, let's see, I got four of those. So there is 16 swap outs. And also I've made a couple of, made a pink lemon battery and that involves a couple of swap outs too so I've done I'm doing one right now so I've probably done at least 20 25 uh, swap outs during a print and it's worked perfectly so for me uh, I've had no errors because I've had a couple errors where it just died but for me the big deal really was when I do the swap out and I don't get the filament in correctly can I keep loading it and loading it and loading it and purging it until I get it where it needs to be and that you know I would say right now a third to half the time I don't get it through in time because of something because well really what happens is when you're not paying attention and it pulls it out uh, the, the, the rest, less filament then just waits for you to put the new one in while it waits if you wait too long it takes the temperature down and so I, I click the button and it has to wait to get up to temperature meanwhile I'm ADD a little bit and so as I went to get to temperature I start thinking about something else to do and I don't help assist it to push it in right that moment so I have half to third to th third to the half the time I really need that push 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 button so for me um, uh, before 4.003 I was avoiding any 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 print I needed to do that had a filament change I was avoiding doing it on the Prusa Mini now I'm not I don't I feel you know I don't want to call it done but I've done if I do about two or three times this at the moment where I'm at I feel totally comfortable doing anything that has filament changes I don't think it's an issue um, I would like to declare victory once I get, I'll declare 90% victory. Once I do about twice as many prints as I've done, I'll probably declare full victory. So good job, proofs of people. That's been fixed. I'm happy. It's working. In fact, I'm doing one right now. So um, anyway, that's enough of all these video fun. So anyway, enough of all that. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.